Well, here we go again. I'm getting more episodes out. A lot has happened since I last published, so this is going to be fun to bring you up to speed. We'll start here with an episode that gets me back in the air after an 11-year hiatus. I know it's inexcusable, but here I am. Enjoy episode 67. Here we go again. Chandler Tower, Cherokee 4121 Tango is at Chandler Air Service. We have Zulu, and uh, we'd like a south departure, please. What does it say to be an angel? Where does the sun go when it sleeps? Welcome back, SBC listeners. As I said in the intro, a lot of stuff has happened since we last spoke. So over the next few episodes, I am sure I'll get you up to speed. But for now, I'll just give you some of the basics. After 11 years, I thought it was time to get back in the cockpit as PIC and then do some more training. So in early 2012, after having my private pilot license for almost four years and having a great time flying, I moved to San Diego with my family. I had to leave my awesome flight club when I did that here in Arizona, and then When I got to my new home near Carlsbad, California, I quickly joined another flight club there. I got checked out in a few of the airplanes in that club, but then my job got really, really demanding and I stopped flying for a while due to lack of time and funds and, you know, all the reasons people stop flying. I also found that since I was covering all of Southern California for my work, that I was spending a lot of time on Southern Cal freeways instead of flying. My family was having a great time at the beach and I was driving three hours to a customer meeting first thing in the morning. So, so yeah, that's when my hiatus from flying first started. And once you've stopped for a while and you let the skills deteriorate, it gets more and more daunting to get it going again. Two and a half years later, we moved back to Arizona and after a great time in SoCal, making lifelong friends and enjoying what must be the most amazing weather in the country. When we moved back, my sons were teenagers and we started spending all of our time and money on wakeboarding, uh, boats, dirt bikes, RVs for going to the dunes, all kinds of awesome stuff. But all of that awesome stuff still relegated flying to the proverbial back burner, if you will. But it kept holding a huge place in my head and in my heart. I know this is likely going to resonate with a lot of you out there, so you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, I planned on getting back in the air a couple of years ago, and I even started releasing new episodes on the podcast. I took my boys, who were then adults, and are adults still, of course, to Air Venture for the first time. We did a bunch of features there, and then I was doing features on the podcast. I was interviewing a lot of folks who involved in flight training before and after Oshkosh in one way or another. And one of my friends from years ago, I've known a long time, who's a captain at a major airline, he started a flight school here locally with his wife a few years earlier. So I reached out to see if he'd come on the podcast and talk about the experience of running a flight school and what he was seeing in the industry and so on. He agreed immediately, but our schedules never really aligned and it just didn't happen. For months, it didn't happen. And then something happened in my life. It was a catalyst And near the beginning of 2023, I had some major changes. And they happened all of a sudden. I was working on my health at the time and my career and making decisions about my future. And I had a major change happen in my work and my career. I immediately decided it was time to jump back in and in a big way. And I also decided that I wanted to make aviation a big part of my future, not just my past. So I decided to start collecting ratings and certs, and at least to start with. But I had to start with just simply getting current and safe. So I went to see my friend at the flight school, and he was thrilled for me and helped me get set up and start training again. I would definitely have some ups and downs, as we do over the next 16 months or so, but I will say this. I've got a lot of content in the can, if you will, ready to be edited and released. So rest assured, I'm sure we'll have another 15 years or so of the podcast with huge breaks in between. No, I'm just kidding. We're not going to do that. We're going to try not to do that. But I am ready to start bringing you all back up to speed. 
and bringing some great training content back to you. Bringing you along with me through the ups and downs, the triumphs and the defeats, as I do, all the way back to where I am now. So where am I now? Well, I'm still having ups and downs, as we do. Still learning a ton and working my way through my own aviation journey. But what this means for you is that it's time to start bringing you with me again. And today, we start that with the first half of my first comeback flight with an instructor. Why only the first half? Well, it's because this is a really perishable skill we have here. And after 11 years, it had basically vanished quite a bit for me. So this flight was so full of relearning and discovery that as I started editing it and started listening to it again, I realized how much of the flight I really wanted to leave in. So you can come along with me while I reconnect a whole bunch of synapses in my brain that had been lost along the way. So to make this episode not be over an hour or two, I decided to break it up into two pieces. I'm sure that we'll be able to speed up the episodes a bit as I get back into the training and release a few more episodes. But for this one, man, I was rusty. But it, what a blast it was to get back up there, back in the cockpit, back in the air. I remembered immediately why aviation would never leave my heart. This is an amazing thing that we get to do. And I realized I was still in love. I hope you enjoy the first part of my foray back into the fold. So let's get started. By the way, my local airport that I'm talking about here and that I'd be flying out of is called Falcon Field, or KFFZ. It's one of two airports here in Mesa. And you'll note that as we go through more of my flights in these episodes, that when I fly south, I fly right over Chandler Municipal, or KCHD. And if you're a longtime listener, you'll recognize that as the home airport where I did my initial training back in 2008. That's another Class Delta airport in the East Valley of the Phoenix area, and we have quite a few airports around here. But now I'm flying out of Falcon, which is an airport I've always loved. It's busy. There's a lot of flight training and lots of other traffic that occurs there, but it's one of my favorites, and it always has been since I've lived in Arizona. I've always lived somewhere near it, and I've always just loved the vibe at Falcon Field. And it's only 10 or 15 minutes away from my current house, so that's pretty nice too. So, as usual, we'll get started after getting back in the airplane and getting the ATIS. I was with an excellent young man named Ryan, my CFI, but just for my flight review, which would take a couple of flights if I remember right. Ryan was ready to head off to a regional airline, but his experience as a CFI and his demeanor was super helpful in helping me get back in the saddle. Here you go. So is the compass working? I, it is, yeah. It's just missing the little uh, plastic plate on uh, the top. So basically, whatever's on top of there is your heading. It should be saying. It's probably going to have to adjust a lot because I turned it around. Okay. Oops. <laughs> That's <laughs> the wrong thing. You're getting, you're getting warmer. Yep. All right, so we are at 13, 13, it looks like. I called about 130. Falcon Ground Oxford 50 at 41 at spot Oops. 5, information November, looking for a Chandler. All right. Okay. Oxford, and uh, spot uh, five. ATIS is first before the flight is Oh, yeah, you're right. right. We'll go ahead and get our ATIS here November first. Looking for uh, our frequency for that is 18.25. One, one okay. You can do it however you like. I like to use the bottom right, number two radio yeah. for ATIS and then the top for stuff I'm talking on. Sounds good. Uh, this comm here. If it has two green lights on COM1, it means you're talking to and listening. This would be monitoring that over the top of that. And then I like putting everything down here. All right. Okay. Contact tower on 124.6. Advise initial contact. You have information November. 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 Got to get her out there in winds and runway. Contact tower information November. 1554 Zulu. Wind calm. Temperature 3. Dew point minus 1. Altimeter 3029. That's way Also, aircraft have reported moderate rhyme icing while attacking. There's no approaching means, landing and departing are only four right and four left. 5D items in effect for Falcon Field. For further information, contact flight service frequency. All arrivals, contact tower on 124.6. Advise initial contact, you have information November. Oh, cool. you good with that? Uh, yeah, winds calm, departing runways four. Yep, and go ahead and hit that bottom one, that'll move both your comms over. 
This is ground? Yep, so 121.3 is ground and 124.6 is tower here. Okay. Uh, flight instruments. Okay, so we got this one. Does that jive with what you'll normally see? Yep, that's good enough. Our elevation here is 1,394 feet, so that's close enough. Okay. And the ATIS did say 3029, yep. right? So you got that set up? Yep. I think it's eight, but yeah, it's eight. Can go up a little more. The two one two Delta Alpha. Okay. Um, airport diagram. I'll be your airport diagram. Thank you. Not, you got one right in that pocket there. Okay. All right. I think we're all right. Ready to go. And we'll go ahead and uh, pull up where that guy was sitting over there by that dash line. Okay. Hey, okay, let her move a little bit. Maybe give your brakes a quick stomp to make sure they work. Oh. And I do not have brakes on my okay, side. Okay, the right so one. If I reach for the, uh, okay. If I reach for the parking brake, that's why I don't have brakes over. All right, clear to the left and to the right. And we're just gonna stop up there before that dash line. Yeah. You're not required to stop there, but it's just a uh, we just stop here because they know where spot three is. That's this what is this all, is called. Yep. Oh, it's right there on the yep. pavement. This is all a non-moving okay. area here, so you can do whatever. But we just stop here because when you say spot three, when you call them, they know where you are. Alrighty. Okay. So, it'll be, and you want to go ahead and put that back up to a thousand. Your power when we're sitting here. Yeah, if you get it below about 900, the alternator will stop charging the battery and it'll start filling up the plugs eventually. Gotcha. All right. We'll go Falcon Ground, Red Rock 66. Where's my push to talk? It is right there. Okay. All right. Just get ready for a theme here. I was not very comfortable after so long off, so I felt, and now that I'm listening again, sounded like almost a new student. I had some good base knowledge and experience, but it was so far removed that I felt like I was starting almost from the ground up. I had about 220 hours at the time, and I would rely on that experience as I relearned, but 220 is not very much in the big scheme of things, especially when it was all 11 to 15 years before. So I made my ground call and the controller surprised us with a pretty funny question. The flight school I was at had moved the airplanes all out to the tie downs and on the flight line instead of at or near the hangar where the school was because of some sort of construction that was going on. So when we went out to a plane, it was either a pretty long walk or a golf cart ride. It was temporary, maybe a month or so, but the planes were parked sort of out in front of the tower so they saw us coming and going like crazy all day long. Oh yeah, before I play it, you'll hear in the background while we're having the back and forth, one of the instructors, one of the other instructors in a different airplane, I think tried to answer as well. You can hear it in the background. Anyway, this is a pretty funny exchange. Here it is. Falcon Ground, Red Rock 66 at spot three with November, requesting north departure. Red Rock 66, Falcon... Uh... Around. How long does it take you to walk over there to your plane? <laughs> Depends on if we have the cart or we're using our feet. I saw you guys using your feet this morning. Uh, we sit in planes all day. Anyways, we need to walk once in a while. About seven minutes. How long does it take you to walk from the building over there? Oh, about seven, eight minutes probably. Pretty important. Okay. Yes, you guys need to exercise. From way four right taxi via Delta Red Rock 66. Four right via Delta Red Rock 66. All right. Nope, that's the first time I heard that one. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a good time. I'm glad with even an extremely busy airport and controllers who are not only busy but perpetually shorthanded, they still have a little fun with the pilots. And speaking of busy, let's talk about that for a minute. As you hear me training here more and more over the next episodes, You'll hear how busy it is, but a quick search shows it's definitely in the top 10 of the country's busiest general aviation airports. In fact, at least three of the top 10 are in the Phoenix area. It's definitely a popular place to, to flight train, so there's a lot of traffic from that, as well as all the other normal traffic. Anyway, glad these overworked controllers take a moment to have fun sometimes. So then we taxied out to the run-up area near the approach end of runway 4 right. Requesting an AD departure. Okay. So you just leave it and use brakes then? 
You leave it at a thousand, even though I would normally pull it back here. No, once I get going, I like to keep it between nine hundred and a thousand. I don't like pulling it that low. Okay. Because uh, in the summer, it'll foul up your plugs real fast okay. with how hot it is. Just a lot of brakes, I guess. That was all of it. All right, she said Delta, right? Yes, sir. The Cherokee four by Alpha, baby, Mike. Well, you'll see. Once you get sawn, you, you can pretty much keep it at 900, and it'll. It, you don't need to ride the brakes as much. Okay. And once I do need to slow down a bit, I just add brakes to about a walking speed, then let go of them. Okay. And keep it going. But right here is good RPM. Trying to get the sight picture. Help me. Help me with the nose wheel. Am I on? Yes. Okay. Basically, take that yellow line, pretend it's coming inside the cockpit, and keep it on your inside leg. That'll keep you right smack dab on the middle. All right. Good. Lower down a little bit. All right, not this left right here, but the next one. We're going to go and pull in here. But it says run up. Yep. Oops, my bad. Go ahead and start slowing down here a little bit. Okay, so just follow the yep. line. Keep following it. And we're just going to pull up into one of these stalls next to these guys. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, these are just run up areas. Really doesn't matter, right? No, you can take any one you want. Whichever one you're feeling like. I'm feeling this one. Yeah, yeah this this one looks nice. Looks comfortable. And stop before the dash line there right. again. So, as you heard, I'm doing things as simple as asking for help to get the sight picture for what it looks like in these planes when you're on centerline taxing. Pretty basic stuff. So about the airplanes I'd be flying. If you remember from my initial training, I learned to fly in Piper Cherokee's PA-28-161 models mostly. They were from the early 80s for the most part, maybe a couple from the late 70s. Then, later in my career, after getting my cert, I joined a local flying club. And back then, that club only had Cessnas, two 182s and a 172 SP. So by the time I was back to this flight, most of my time had been accumulated in a 182, which is a type that I really, really love even to this day. Well, the school uses mostly PA-28 180s. The extra power is nice out here in the desert when it gets hot, but you'll notice that they are not 181s. These are mostly 60s era airplanes, and they are well used in a very busy flight school. They are airworthy, of course, but they are not going to win any beauty contests, let's put it that way. But you'll hear coming up a pretty funny situation. I had to get over where my muscle memory was thwarting my ability to fly these older planes. We'll get to that in a minute. For now, we do the run-up. Back in a PA-28 for the first time in about 13 years. Oh, All right, I'm going to need a run-up. Parking brake. And up. Mixture rich. Do we want it rich? Yep, you can go all the way rich. Okay. Six, five, two, Flight controls. Clear the right side and going to, uh, I believe it's Falcon Aviation. Up on this side, Tower down on that five. side. Delta Tango Falcon. Free and correct. Roger, stand by. Throttle 2000. I wish you had uh, brakes too. Right turn nope. up, Bravo, I can hold your uh, parking brake. That's okay. I'll I'll out of it. I think I got Thank it. Thank you. Uh, magnetos. Where's my. Right there. Yeah, big, uh, six Delta Tango. About 100. Taxi via Delta makes the left turn at Bravo. That's the center taxiway with the uh, blue and white is. And Falcon Look, good deal. That looks good to me. A, uh, curb heat. There's a lead guy with a Drop. neon yellow amps. Oh, I'm waiting for you. Where's my uh, that ammeter uh, reads so barely uh, above zero you can't uh, tell. But right here is a battery voltage meter. Okay. If you're anywhere around 14, you're good. If yep. you see it constantly going down, you know you got an issue. All right, thank you. Vacuum. Hey, right there, we're right looking here. for anywhere between four and six. All right, we're at five. Oil and fuel gauges. Our oil temperature is still low. Oil pressure's good. Fuel's good. Throttle back to idle. Thousand. So we'll pull her all the way out. Can't yes. Pull it anymore. We're just making sure it's not going to die on us. Oh, you want to pull it yeah, all the way? Pull out? it all the okay. way out to idle and just make sure it keeps running. Okay. And then once you know, we'll then go up to a thousand. And this isn't on the checklist, but I always relean it after my run-up. Because, uh, that's about good. Most of the time here, you'll sit in line behind ten other people in line. Yeah. And if you sit there idling forever, it'll those, foul it up. It'll yeah. foul up your plugs, and you'll go to take off, be like, oh my god, my engine's dying. <laughs> but your plugs are just stuffed full of lead. 
All right, flight Welcome instruments. That looks good. Red zero. November, requesting a chance. Uh, it doesn't really match anymore. Yeah, about three. Yeah, usually Oscar. Uh, Vacuum took a gets while. A little bit off of it. Yeah. We're at three hundred. Well, those heading indicators constantly <laughs> persist when you turn. Man, you can't get it to stop where <laughs> yeah, you want it. Yeah, it's good enough. It's good enough. Uh, any other flight instruments I need to check? I always just look over everything one more time. Airspeed, that, altimeter. I look at that. Mostly this is the only one that moves. Yeah. But I just look at everything. Okay. Oh, well, they're all good. Transponder is 1,200. Yep. And we want to go to altitude. That'll right? automatically cycle to altitude once yeah. you take off. Automation. Yep. Uh, before takeoff, brief. All right. Doing a normal takeoff? Normal takeoff. If uh, anything happens on the runway, we'll come to a stop, get off. Uh, anything off the runway, and we can't turn back. We got golf courses right off the ends of the runways, or we got McDowell Road, which is pretty wide and usually not very busy. Thousand feet or higher, we'll make a 180, and we'll land on 22 right, facing to the south. Okay. That's usually how I like the my game plan. All right, and radio set. Cool. So you can go flip over to tower now. We were cleared to taxi all the way down to the runway. This is just a pit stop along the way. Okay. And then I always put the next frequency we're going to use too, just okay. to have it ready. So we're going on to the north practice area. That's 122.75. We use those guys. Oop. Seven five. There you go. Perfect. One two two point seven five. Yes, Radios sir. are set. Traffic, three miles we don't do the before takeoff till we get down there, right? I usually do it if oh. I'm going to be number one down there, but that guy might be taxiing out by the time we get there, so I would just okay. go here. So fuel pump on. You okay with it on now? Yes, sir. Those are strobes. That's not it. Black one. Flying what found? Landing light on. Hey, Bravo. And the only thing I wait to do okay. is my mixture. I leave that lead. Yep. Okay. Flaps. Uh, we don't do any flaps okay. for a normal takeoff. Mixture will do that. And door is secured. Yes, sir. So our before takeoff. takeoff checklist is yep. done. Okay, so we're ready to head up to the runway and hold short. Here you go. Get out on the runway there. You need your feet off the brakes. Uh, Please keep one hand on the yoke and one hand on the throttle the whole entire way down the runway and for about the first few hundred feet that we climb up. Sure. We rotate at 60 miles an hour and we climb at 85. All right. This is miles per hour? Yes, sir. Okay. I just like to pop her off the ground and just keep the nose on the horizon for a bit so you can see. And uh, it takes, takes a few seconds to gain speed. Tell, so. me, the, tell me the climb out, climb out speed again. It's 85. 85. Yes, okay. Sir. Is that VY? Yes, sir. Okay. 60 and 85. Yippers. And checklist complete. And at the hold short line, we're good to go. Here's the takeoff and climb out. They beat us up here. Yeah. Red Rock 53, back to airfly straight out. Right, 48, clear for takeoff. Red Rock 53, clear for takeoff. Straight out. Four right. Go to the hold short? Yep. Okay. I just like to stop so I can see the whole thing over my nose. Give yourself plenty of room. Kind of here? Yeah, that's about good right there. All right, and you just give him a shout. I just Falcon Tower, Red Rock 66, holding short of four right. Falcon Tower, Red Rock 66, holding short, four right. Red Rock 66, back there, fly straight out, right, four right, quick take Clear for takeoff, fly straight out, Red Rock 66. Oh, I didn't say the runway. Yeah, he might ask you, but it doesn't sound like it, so okay. keep going. Some of them ask you, some of them don't. Yeah. Hi, get your mixture there. It was improper. There you go. All right. I'm now, do you want me to do a brief pause or just roll into it? No, you can just roll, roll into it. Yep, okay. just roll into it. Once you get out there, scoot those heels down to the floor, though, for me, and get those feet off the brakes. Okay. All righty. There we go. All the way. And everything is in the green. Okay. And we're at 60. Yeah, nice smooth back pressure. Oops. Keep that bit of right rudder in there. Keep pulling her off. There you go. There we go. Yeah. And 85. Three left turn first. Nice job. Oops. Is it uh, pulling on you pretty hard or does it feel all right? Uh, it's okay. Okay. I'll reset it here in a second. Sounds good. 
<laughs> I'm all over the place. You're fine. You're doing good. <laughs> okay, so remember, I was back in a Piper after quite a while. But not only that, I had never flown a Cherokee from the 60s before. In the Cherokees I had flown, the trim wheel was on the center cons console down by the flap handle. And in the Cessnas, it's in a relatively similar place on the lower portion of the panel in the center. On these older PA-28s, the flap handle looks like the old-time car window cranks, uh, those crank handles, and it's overhead on the ceiling in the middle between the pilots. I reverted to my primacy of learning and all of my experience, and when I go to trim, I would reach down, not up. The crazy thing was I kept doing it, and it wasn't obvious which way to crank the to lower or raise the the nose with trim since it's a horizontal crank i figured it out within a few flights but we had a good laugh at my expense every time i would reach down to trim and nothing was there to turn <laughs> looking great okay just need a little where is that <laughs> it's up under your ceiling yeah. you cessna boys <laughs> That was just pure muscle memory. Yep. Which way is uh, forward? Just swivel yeah. it and see what it does. Okay. That's the wrong way. Okay. Red Rock 66, left turn approved. That's you. Yep. Left turn approved, Red Rock 66. I've got over a thousand hours in these and I still don't know which way is which with the trim. <laughs> I just give it a couple swivels, shit, wrong way, then I go the other way. We want to head due north. Uh, you see where all those houses are out there in like the foothills of the yep. mountains? That's uh, Fountain Hills. So that's where we usually point when we go out to North Park, sir. So, you see, where'd they go? Those guys right ahead of us? Yes, sir. About your 11 o'clock, just follow them. Okay. And we're going to go up to 3,700 feet. 3,700. Yep. We're under a 4,000 foot Bravo shelf right now. Sure. So we usually do 37 going out and 33 coming back in just because so many people funnel in and out of the same place. Or, sorry, four right at and you're head on, so it just kind of keeps you. Larger. You know, and not on a head-on collision go course. Go back to our gotcha. And coming back, you do what? We do 33 coming in 33 and 37 going out. Okay. Yep. And when you're ready, get your after takeoff there real quick. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's nice and smooth out here. Yeah. Like you wouldn't know it from my takeoff, but... <laughs> um, after takeoff, flaps, zero, mixture, rich, landing light off, and pump off, probably. Fuel yeah, pump yeah, off. you can go ahead and turn that on. Yeah, you remember our contact? Okay. Yeah, Still have fuel pressure. Yep. Airspeed, cruise climb, 100. After takeoff, complete. Man, did you turn the autopilot on? Yeah, it's my feet. <laughs> I'm a little fast at 90. Are we okay? Or should no, I you're fine. To? Okay. The crew, it tells you on your after takeoff to pitch over to, go to 100. 100. Okay. So you can if you want. Usually when you're a little heavier, uh, like uh, the plane, I shoot for about 90, because 100 you'll basically, basically barely not climb. climb. Okay. Yeah, but 95 or so, whatever's good. Just okay. basically get the nose down far enough so you can see over the or, uh, sure. over it. Jeez, I keep reaching uh, look down. at you. Muscle memory. <laughs> so we go out to the north practice area, and he wanted to start me slow with just some regular old turns. Take a listen. Cool. All right. So you just want to give me a nice left 360. Just try and maintain your altitude. Do about maybe, I don't know, 30 degrees of bank or so. 30 degrees. All right. Do you do... Okay, let's see. Hey, we look clear to the left. Before nice. I do any turns out here, so clear left, clear right. Or just the way you're turning, so clear left. Okay. Left turn. Is a... Just get into that bank and then just kind of work on using the horizon to keep yourself level. Yep. Let it do all the work for you. And if you see you're getting a little, there you go. Yep. Trying to figure out the sight picture again. Yeah, you're good. That's why we're doing circles here. Oops, I let my turn out. Just give her a little more back pressure and a little bit of a descent there. Oh, yeah. Kind of keep the ripple right on the horizon, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, this one I think is a little more difficult to keep low than the other ones because this dash is all... Yeah, you can't really, you can't see the nose, or the other ones, you sit up nice and high, you can see the whole calendar. Simulated emergency descent, uh, northeast. Northeast practice, Red Rock 66 over Rio Verde community at 5,500, circling northeast. Want me to roll out north again? Yeah, roll out north and then go back the other way. Okay. 
just that little burble. Yeah, I might have a wake of air there. Okay. All right. Clear? Clear, clear right. Oh, what's going on? Sky Quad 8, Lima Alpha, 5,500, just north of Dynamite Road. Going to be maneuvering in northeast bound, northeast. Oh, this is totally different on this side. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Fifty forty eight over the Rio Verde, uh, headed towards the orchards at five thousand. Uh, simulated emergency uh, engine fire. Uh, northeast. Oh, they're over Rio Verde at five thousand. We'll keep an eye out for them. I've become such a wuss without sunglasses since I started oh, no. flying. Once I started wearing them, it man, would, like it would kill any, me, man. If there's any light out, I like can't see. All right, roll out on north again there. Nice job. That looked pretty good. It's nice. It's pretty still. Yeah. <laughs> this thing is pretty stable. They, they fly like trucks. All right. Go ahead and give me a left turn to 240. Try to do the same amount of bank. 240 at 30. Yep. Okay. It's clear. And when you're rolling to your turn, relax a little bit on that left rudder. You okay. don't really need it until you're actually in the turn. Okay. You barely need any. Please practice Oxford 4263. Simulator emergency landing. We're going to be on the north uh, side. A little of too much right. Northeast. Oops, right. I'm on, not on my heading. <laughs> I rolled out on the street. <laughs> I didn't see nothing. <laughs> All right, now let's go back to, uh, how about 030? 030. Yes, sir. That's really... All right, so not too bad after all that time, but these were just turns for crying out loud. It was time to move on to a few other things. So Ryan wanted to demonstrate slow flight once and then have me try it. Beautiful. Okay, that's easy for you. Should we start with some slow flight? Sure. Go ahead and do that. You feel up for it? Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. All right, so on your checklist, we got a pre-maneuver checklist that we'll go through first. The clearing turns you can skip. We just, we'll call those all our clearing turns. Just need a little bit of trim here. Okay. Oh, maybe, maybe not. Okay, before cruise. It's on like the very there. Three minutes. Very back. Okay, clearing turns complete. Just did them. Mm -hmm. Fuel pump on. Landing light on. Nice. There we go. Mixture rich. Want to do that? Yep. Okay. Carb heat. I don't know. Think we need it? No, we only There's use no carb heat right? when we. Yeah, we get. We use carb heat when we get carb icing. Otherwise, you leave it cold. All right, and throttle, okay. Please. All righty. So I'll go ahead and just kind of do it with you first okay. and just run you through our procedure to do it. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to pick a starting heading. I don't really care about you maintaining your heading perfectly today. Just kind of look at something out front and just point at it. I'll just kind of point out towards Bartlett here. Keep away from the mountain so we don't hit any bumps. I'm going to try and maintain about 5,500 here. So first thing we're going to do, pull our power down to 2,000 RPM. Okay. And then once we're at 100 miles an hour, we're going to get our first notch of flaps in. There you go. So if you want to go ahead and pull it, kind of feel it. The first one doesn't really do much to you. The second one is the one that likes to blend up. All right, then 90 miles an hour, we'll get our second notch. I'm a big fan of trim, too. Oh, yeah. Make it do the work for you. And uh, close enough, get 90. Third, uh, second notch. There we go. Built that one a little more. And this is the one I swear to God, it just stops slowing down. Sometimes you got to pull a little extra power. I get more trim in. Then 80, you'll get your last. So it's just 190, 80 with the flaps. And then we'll go ahead and slow the sucker all the way down until I get a first indication of stall. Okay. Probably get it to about 55 miles an hour. And you're sitting at about 17. Yeah, it'll half. come down a little bit on its own while you slow down. Okay. Just holding altitude. Yep, just holding altitude. And we're pretty much going to go until the stall light blinks. And we'll do our thing about five miles an hour above that. I'm not pulling. You, yeah, you're it's good. It's your airplane, right? Uh, yeah, for the most part. Okay. Just kind of feel me do this. I'm, that's what I'm doing, yeah. So I'll just keep getting our nose up slightly. Get ready with the power. Just to get a little bit in. And there's our light. So about 55 miles an hour. So we'll do this at about 60. Okay. We'll get a little bit of power in. Nose it down just a tad. Ground reference over the orchards at 2,000. No idea. And we're yeah, sorry, we're All right, so slow flight, you're going to kind of use your pitch to control your airspeed and your power for your altitude. So, you see we're about 50 feet low. If I want to get back up, I'm just going to add a little bit of power. Yeah. 
Now, when I add that power, I'm trying to stay at 60, so I'm going to nose up a little bit, too, so I don't just speed up. Yep. Remember, we're going to need a good, decent amount of right rudder here because we're pitched up high, high power setting, very slow. There we go. Right where I want to be, so I'll pull my power back out. Around 2,000 RPM seems to be the sweet spot with this thing. I'll give you a couple turns, too, when we do it. We'll do no okay. more than 10 degrees of bank. So, shoot for about 10. Be a nice low flight. I like everything to be slow. Like we're a little Again. fast. Yep. Even though we're in a left turn, we're still adding right rudder just because of our high power and all that I know. glorious 180 horsepower amount of torque working against us. <laughs> Did you just pull a little power? I just pulled a tiny bit of power, yep. Okay. And my airspeed's pretty much right where I want it. I like to try and stay within 10 miles an hour. Okay. Minus zero plus 10 is the ACS standard, so if you can hold that, that's wonderful. But, see, we're getting a tad bit high, so I'll just pull out a smidge yep. of power, just let her sink down into place. And I'm going to roll out about here. And our recovery, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to try and maintain our altitude still on our heading, so we're going to go full power. Get one notch flaps out right away. And I put okay. a ton of trim in there, so I like to kind of trim the nose down while I speed up. Yep. Kind of like a little a boat planting down on top of the water once it speeds up. 80 will get our second notch. And then at 90, we'll get our last. More nose down trim. There's 90. And around 100 miles an hour, I'll reset my power to my cruise. Up. 21, 22. There we go. Cool. It was my turn now to get my slow flight on. If you don't know or you don't remember, slow flight is helpful in getting a feel for controlling the airplane in various configurations, getting it slow, and then being on the backside of the power curve, as they say, or in the area of reverse command, where you have to add power to go slower. And then, importantly, the recovery is great practice for controlling the airplane, having it do what you want rather than being mostly along for the ride. So this is how it went for me. Cool. All right. Want to give it a shot? Yes, sir. Go for it. What, what heading? Uh, just this way is fine. Okay. I'll go ahead and kind of talk you through it while you do it. So okay. first thing, power to 2,000. We'll try and stay around 5,500 feet. That's good. Okay. And then 100 miles an hour, you get your first notch flaps. All right, and then 90, we'll get our second notch. If you see you're not slowing down at all, it's probably because you're in a little bit of a descent. Yeah. Gotcha. Then if we need to pull out a little bit of power to it. All right. Expect to Sometimes it takes a long fountain, time in the winter uh, to slow down. Over the fountain, head back to Falcon, love call. Marty's. A little low. And, and just touch up a bit. There you I go. got it. Okay. This, this flat, flap lever isn't very clicky in this plane. The other ones, it's really like... You can feel it. Yeah. Okay, might need to slow it down a little bit. Yep, and then just pitch up your nose just a tiny, tiny bit. That'll get rid of a few extra miles per hour for you. And there you go. And there we go. 80. Okay, let's slow down. <laughs> I can't tell when it gets it. <laughs> no, let's just do it at basically 60, like we did last time. So we'll keep pulling that nose up as you slow down. And it's up to you. If you want to make life easier, use trim. Good point. If you, if you want to get an arm workout, then don't. You can use as much or as little as you want. Okay. All right. Cool. So keep pitching that nose up. we got a little extra airspeed to get rid of. And we're also starting to get a little oh, low. Yes, so let's kind of get our hand on that throttle and maybe get some power in. To get about 2,000 about two thousand RPM will keep you level. Okay. So if you need to climb a little bit, you'll probably have to go a little higher than that. Got it. And keep it above 60 with pitch. Get a little right rudder there. Yeah, there Slip you go. Out. Beautiful. I'm climbing on purpose a little bit just to get back. Oh, I, That's I see right. what you're doing, and I'm liking it. Yeah, 100, 200 foot per minute climb is perfect for slow flight. There you go. And when you're ready, give me a left turn to uh, about 090. Zero, 090. Zero. Zero, zero. Yep, so Keep it about 10 degrees of bank. You're probably still going to have to keep that right rudder in there. Okay. Just keep using that power and that pitch. Control your airspeed and altitude. Beautiful. Oh, roll out. Yeah. All right. Hey, let's go ahead and recover. Okay. So recovery, remind me of the RPM. Yep. It'll go full power. Full, full power. Yes, okay. sir. And I'm going to need all the way. And then get okay. one notch of flaps out right off the bat. 
And then just try and maintain your altitude. Remember, it's going to kind of balloon up on you as you speed up. Yep. And at 80, we'll get our second one out. And 90, the last one. And then coming up on 100, I'll set my power back to where I had it at cruise, about 2100 or so. Dude, that was beautiful. I would have passed a commercial check ride right there. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it helps the area still. No, that, that is true. It's a little more difficult when it's, uh, when it's bumpy out, but I did get five degrees right in my heading. No, that's all right. Commercially, you get plus minus five, so good job. Well, hopefully I'll be doing that in a few months. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, so how'd that feel? Good. Good. It looked great. It looked great. I really got nothing for you. Every, every time you started descending or ascending, you did the correct uh, fix for it. Used your power, and I heard you saying you were using your pitch for airspeed, so that's, that's perfect. So that's where we'll leave it for this episode. We'll pick this flight back up in the next one, which I promise to release next week. We'll head back into Falcon Field and do my first landing in a minute. So I do appreciate any of you who are still listening, or anyone who's just discovering the podcast. Like I said, I've got a lot of editing and releasing to do, but I am not wanting for content or drama so I'll release an episode each week. Right now, we'll be doing that on Tuesdays. So hopefully, you stick around, and we go on this learning journey again together. As always, I would love to hear from you. Questions, comments, and critiques doesn't matter to me. Just reach out. And the easiest way is to just send an email to bill at studentpilotcast.com. I'll have some other ways to reach out soon, too, but my old trusty Twitter or X account is still there, too. You'll find me there under at Bill Will. That's Bravo India Lima Lima, Whiskey India Lima. And if you're training or you're teaching or you'd like to be, let me know about you and your own journey in aviation. But again, being back in the air was awesome. It had obviously been too long, but I was thrilled. I had some more practice to do, quite a bit of it, actually. But I knew then that I was going to be a pilot. Again. Music for today's episode is To Be an Angel by the Canadian band Uncle Seth. You can get more information and subscribe to the podcast feeds on the web at studentpilotcast.com. Remember, any instruction that you hear in this podcast was meant for me and for me alone in the situation I was in at the time. Please do not try to blindly apply anything you see or hear in this podcast to your own flying without thinking it through on your own completely. If you have questions about any aspect of your flying, please consult a qualified CFI.